until he is sufficiently evolved and unfolded to be entrusted with its use. Thought is a spiritual power of tremendous potency, but this is not the power of which we speak. By thought, man can either raise himself up and connect himself with the powerhouse of the universe, or cut himself off entirely from the divine inflow. His thought is his greatest weapon because, by it, he can either draw on the infinite or sever himself in consciousness, but not in reality, from his divine source. Through the divine spark within him, which is really his real self, man is connected with the infinite. Divine life and power are his if he realizes that they are his. So long as he is ignorant of his oneness with the divine source of all life, he is incapable of appropriating the power that is really his. If, however, he enters into this inner knowledge, he finds himself the possessor of infinite power and unlimited resources. This power, then, is God's, yet it is also man's, but it is not revealed to him until he is fit to be entrusted with it. It is only when man realizes his oneness with his divine source that he becomes filled with its power. Many teachers lament the fact that certain secrets are being spread broadcast today, secrets that, in the past, were kept closely guarded. They fear that unilluminated and unevolved people may make destructive use of spiritual power. This, to the writer, appears to be improbable. It is true that strong personalities who have a great belief in their own power to achieve and succeed draw unconsciously on hidden powers, and thus are able to raise themselves high above their fellows. The use, however, that they can make of spiritual power for base purposes is limited and is not to be feared. There are others, of course, who are misusing their powers. These are black magicians, and while they may do a certain amount of harm 